Oh yeah. This musical theme is created by Jordy White from Marilyn Manson fame, who is joining us next week at Fred Sablon because their new uh, show on Feral Audio, Hour of Goon, is also airing. And so Jordy's made us a lot of music, so get ready for a lot of groovy, spooky rock from Jordy White. I think there's lyrics at some point, too. Let's bring us Spencer Crittenden, everybody. Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, did you, you uh, explain that? I, I did. I shouted it out. All right. I was getting all ready to explain the Marilyn Manson guy. Yeah. Now how am I going to start the show? <laughs> Well, you, you, t- t- take a swing at it. We, we, we. Uh, this guy from Marilyn Manson made music. <laughs> He's going to be on the show in a couple weeks. Uh, that guy likes Star Wars and comic books more than anybody in this room. Like he is the biggest like sci-fi geek in the universe. It's great. I uh, I got I got I got Star Wars on my uh, Apple TV. I-, I watched Hateful Eight instead, and I. Uh, <laughs> Like I, I, you know, I, I can't believe I, I'm, I'm kind of I'm proud and ashamed of it at the same time. And I'm just like every time I like open up the thing, I'm like I'm gonna watch a movie and I see the oh the new Star Wars. And I'm like ah, I'm gonna, I'll just watch it some other time. <laughs> like I saw, I saw I saw the clip of you know Han Solo wanting to use the crossbow and then he's like I like it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like if that I can extrapolate what that movie is gonna be. <laughs> it's just, it's not for me, right? It's not for me. Yeah. I think I mentioned that I fell asleep in the theater and then fell asleep in my dream. We're, we're old, yeah. you know? We're old. Yeah, yeah. Is we're it for old. young people? Spencer, did you, did you watch it? Did you dig the new one? I never got into Star Wars, man. I saw it like a couple times as a kid, but then any time I'd seen any part of it since then, I was like, what the fuck? Is this Darth Vader? He's in this one too? It's just really crazy to me. So it's just the same thing. <laughs> I'm excited about the fact that they're what they're doing industrially speaking. I think they might as well break that thing open and do what they're doing in a post Marvel world. That's well, let's watch a million Star Wars movies. I don't mind that because uh, like, they're they're taking the you know they're just throwing everything at the wall, and so so some of that shit's gonna be good. Uh, all different writers and directors and stuff. It's gonna be fun. Uh, it's not it's not a secret, right? The Legos guys are doing the Han Solo thing. That's all announced and stuff. And Adam Driver's playing Han Solo. Am I getting any of this right, or am I just old? <laughs> I have I don't, no idea. I, I, could, I could have about. this all wrong. Like, like, no, Adam Driver is playing. Never mind. Uh, uh, Adam, Adam Arkin is driving them to the lot. Um, I uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting ready to to, to you know I'm, I'm I'm just banking stuff for you know I'm just trying to put together a, a, a nest egg for my retirement now and uh, I don't need to take in any more pop culture. I'm not going to be relevant. <laughs> Ten years from now, when this stuff's going to be funny to reference, you know, like, like when I was thirty-five, and you'd, you'd bust out a Goonies joke, and people would be like, Ugh. <laughs> so the equivalent of that, right, right now for this stuff, I'd be like seventy, going like, remember the remake of the remake of the remake of the Goonies, <laughs> and, and, and people would be like, why? Right, well, go to bed, old man. Do you have yeah. an ideal retirement age? What uh, do, do, do you think you want to retire at some forty-two? Point? I am currently a year behind schedule. Uh, I uh, I spent the day retired. I, I didn't have to shoot. Uh, I was supposed to be writing my book uh, for for Double Day, but uh, instead I, uh, I I've got I I I've, I've really I really was a bad boy today. Like I. I <laughs> My g- girlfriend's out of town, and I, so it was literally like you heard my voice last week. Um, like I, I've been, I've not been outside of anyone's company for like, like, like months, and and like I just sort of, I just vegged out today, and I, 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 I kept, I kept opening up my computer and going, okay, I'm gonna start writing, but then so you like I, I. I <sighs> like I, I've, 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 I took like like bullshit time wasting video gaming to a no, new level today, and just actually made some interesting discoveries. Like my 
but I've been playing this game called Avengers Academy <laughs> on the iPad. Uh, it's a, it's like a game for and by thirteen year old girls set in the Marvel universe, in which all the Marvel characters are going to prep school, and you you press on Wasp, and she says like, "Want to take a selfie?" and and then you, she takes a selfie for a while, and then it's like like you can you can make her take selfies faster if you buy enough crystals or. But, like, you know, you're not going to pay any money, right? You're going to beat the game. And, um, and so I've been on this thing for a while, and now they've got the Guardians of the Galaxy event happening this weekend or all through April. So there's, like, you can unlock Guardians of the Galaxy. They crashed outside the campus. And you're just – it's just a farming game. It's just all these – these games are – it's getting really scary how much of a science they've gotten, like, our, our just dopamine spiking uh, to, to, to a thing. So, so I – well, so – well, so – so, like, you can see the effect it has had on me. Like, I, I'm not as put together as I usually am. I, I, um, but, but there was a game I found. It's called Adventure Capitalist. It's by this uh, this uh, uh, the company's called Congregate with a K. I'm actually re- I'm recommending you should check it out. Like, I don't, I'm not gonna say everybody in the world's gonna like it, but it's insane. It's insanely like minimalist. Like, like it it, it literally is like. You press a button to make your lemonade stand generate money. So it's a progress indicator that goes whoop, and then your lemonade stand has made money. So then you press it again, and it whoop, it did it again. Whoop, and you keep doing it. And after a while, if you keep doing it, a button appears below it that says, well, now you can buy a donut shop. (laughs) More money, progress indicator goes a little slower. After a while, you get some more money, and then it goes, hey, you tired of pressing those buttons? Why don't you hire a manager? And then you go to the thing. Oh. And you hire wow. these managers. A lemonade manager. Thousand bucks. And he's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Your lemonade's getting made. And you're, you orgasm when that happens. <laughs> they trick you. You go like, oh, my God, it's making lemonade. Whether I touch it or not. <laughs> And then, and, then, and then you do the same with the donuts, and it goes all the way. It go, there's two rows on the iPad. If it's portrait style, it's two rows, and the bottom row is just oil rigs and everything. And, then, and, then, and just I've been playing it for two days straight because part of the game is once you get like into quadrillions of dollars, um, you can start. You can hit restart. You acquire you accru- you accrue these angel investors, which which means basically. It's the, it's all it means is that you can start the game over and you kind of like it's 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 like the, everything costs different. It's like, but it's insane. I'm so fucking addicted to it. They've like they figured it out. Like you don't need a, a Pac Man eating dots even. Like it's it's you, we're, we're monkeys. We'll just sit there and fucking uh, uh, uh. like I, I I've got the thing running right now. I'm like I can't I, I can't wait to get home and like like like. Can, can we fire it up and see where you're at right now? Can no we no no. I would time? Wanna, uh, what I, what I want to do with my phone is I brought... So, so Avengers Academy, back to that. <laughs> so I'm playing Avengers Academy, and it's these kids, they're young adults, and they, you know, they've got will-they-won't-they they stories going on, and it's all, all family-oriented. The Tony Stark character, of course, is supposed to be... He's supposed to be like the... You know, he's, the, he's like the... For those of you who are my age, uh, three of you, uh, he's the Mahoney of this Academy. <laughs> Nope. Nobody. That, that that was for me and you. <laughs> uh, and, and Spencer's dad listening somewhere at home. Um, okay, but okay. So so every time you touch these kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was for me, you, and a couple people. Now now I'm listening. <laughs> Go it's a great on. New game. Every time you touch these kids, you get a dollar, <laughs> and they get a piece of candy. Yeah. And uh, you touch enough kids, you get a you get a van. <laughs> and that, but it has windows in it, and you have to. But you can remove them yeah. as you upgrade. Uh, <laughs> your crawl space needs more space. <laughs> yes, you need, you need a shovel sharpener. It's to bury the kids you killed. <laughs> you sickos. Uh, okay, 
But every time you touch one of these young folks, <laughs> that made it better. Uh, made it worse. Made every it worse. time you tap on one of them, uh, you know, they just they every time a, every time you tap that, <laughs> they have a sound bite. So, if you, like I said, if you tap Wasp, she goes, like, so fierce. Um, but they have, like, 20 random things. So sometimes she'll go, like, whatever happened to romance? Um, let's see. I, I think I have... I, want, I wanted to set the tone for you. So let's see. Wait, here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a Wasp one. Wait. Oh, shit. I got to put it... Okay. This party started. It's, <laughs> let's get this party started, Wasp, Wasp says. Um, so... It, you know, it's just, it's just in case you didn't know what a soundbite was. Here's I, I, Loki. I, I, Lo- can, I, can I hear a couple more? Loki, Loki is going to the Academy, too. He's kind of like, I know what you're saying. Isn't he a bad guy? Well, that's the thing about you when you're in school. It's like frenemies, you know? So like, so like Red Skull will come in a leather jacket and he'll be like, what's up? You know? he will be like, get out of here. And he'll be like, okay, so. So here's some Loki soundbites or one Loki soundbite. I don't take orders from you. So, so that's just that's just like it's just imagine that these so are just he's, little he's bites. The, he's the gecko, uh, gecko. So, so over over time, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hear these things five thousand times if you're really addicted to this game. And, that, and the, so the thing is about the Tony Stark uh, uh, character. Now, if the if the kid playing Tony Stark is is a fan of the podcast, I, I, I hope he doesn't do anything untoward um, to, to himself. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you sound fine. You should be working in voiceover work. It's just that this is your 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 clips were poorly directed and poorly chosen for the game because they're very very long. Uh, for considering that every time I tap on Tony Stark, which is going to be a lot, because he's he's the best and he makes everything. So like it's I, you have to hear these like very long uh, long sound clips. But let, let, so I I recorded. A handful of Tony Stark's sound bites until I got to the one that really, really bothers me. Um, and I think it's the last one. So let's, first we'll just listen to a couple. I don't take orders. Oh, that's not. That's, <laughs> oh, oh, could you imagine if that was Tony Stark? <laughs> Why did you bring me to this podcast? <laughs> no, I swear. He, Rob Corddry was here last week. <laughs> He's my favorite writer. <laughs> I said, someone's on a first date tonight. <laughs> and I blew it for them. I blew it. But there's one other person who's on a first date, and we na- we're nailing it somehow. I don't know how. I don't know. Maybe, 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 the, maybe the girl that brought the guy, the guy is like, maybe he's like a, a, a big Avengers fan. And he's like, I didn't, know, I didn't know you'd take me to see a fat guy play clips from... <laughs> thing and, and yeah. she's like yeah well I know what I'm doing and he's like I'm gonna make love to you tonight and she's like see how it, 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 those roles it, it, to give the woman agency I was gonna I was gonna go see David Gilmore from Pink Floyd but I'm so much happier that we came to see this yeah <laughs> oh the fat guy yes okay the fat guy playing clips that's David Gilmore from Pink Floyd that's what that's what that's well, what, he's just he, no he's a very sexy guy from Pink Floyd isn't he God, is he here? Is he? No, I, I think he's playing tonight at the forum or something. Oh, okay. I didn't. I was trying to figure out what dot you were connecting. I, I know. I'm just saying. You know, tonight's the dot. Tonight's I think Los Angeles. We, we live dot. in the entertainment capital of the world. There's a lot of choices for your oh, entertainment okay. right. dollar. David Gilmore from Pink Floyd is playing. <laughs> I mean, I, I even I would say better to come here. Even you? Yeah. Even if, if Roger Waters isn't there, come here. <laughs> Wow. All right. Shots fired. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's, some, here's some Tony Stark. Let's get serious. Or not. Okay. <laughs> he's funny. He's the funny one. So remember that one. He, okay? he's, the, he's the funny one. Remember that one. Let's get serious. Or not. Okay. So th- that one's going to come back to haunt you in a second. Here's some more. We make a great team. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, uh, Tony. Let's do a couple more. Um, longer. 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 Remember, kids are gonna have to listen to this five hundred. Hey, also, times can I give day. you? Can I give you one more note? We do it again. Can you trail off towards the end? Yeah. Can, can that lose energy, kind of? Yeah. There's one that's not on here where he goes. 
Uh, you can tell that the kid like that's doing the voice. You can tell that the director was like, "I think uh, I think we're missing the. Uh, can you do it one more time? I don't think we're getting the word assistant because because the catchphrase is, maybe you could be my new assistant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's really weird. All right, here's some more. This has a payoff, kind of. That's right. I'm a genius. Yeah, it's just a, he just said. He's, How does everyone feel about me making an army of robots? Whatever. Okay. I mean, we feel great. Like, do it. Like, <laughs> it's not a catchphrase. You think villains know that they don't have a chance, or do they just not get it? This is like nails on a chalkboard. I don't like. It. Okay, I think this next one might be. Let me. Oh boy. Let me. Okay. I'm taking a half day. Yeah, that one's fine. That's short. Let's get serious. Okay, so, so here we go. <laughs> So two of them, two of them start with "Let's get serious." So you remember the first one starts with a, a middle uh, down the third base line. "Let's get serious or not," you know, it's fine. But now he's, is he growing up? Is he going through puberty? No, like, no. This one sounds like he's just clipping the mic and it's, he's just enraged like at first. But now listen, don't don't react like after "Let's get serious." Listen to the tag on this one. So it's a different like why they would include two "Let's get serious" ones. I don't know. But this one is the worst. This is the worst. Like it's not the worst Avenger Academy catchphrase. It's not the worst uh, uh, thing. That, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> And every uh, there's like a there's like a one in twenty chance you hear this every time you tap on Tony Stark. Okay, <clears throat> so again, don't react after he says "Let's get serious." Wait for it. Wait for the amazing punchline. Let's get serious. Is what people tell me all the time. <laughs> Is that a line from the movie? Is, 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 no! <laughs> That's not a line from humanity. That's not... Okay, I, I have I, not I, seen the Iron Man films. Is, are people constantly saying you're too serious or you should be more serious? Hey, everybody, cool it! Is something people say to me. <laughs> no one ever talks like that. That's awful. It's, and it's really long and it's like, it's just, it's terrible. And maybe it lost something in the translation, but... Is it, is, is it's it all enough? I could do to play this game for the last two weeks. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not enough to scare you off playing it. No, for... I'm addicted. I, I love wasp selfies. I love. Uh, I, I, they're all. They're, I'm leveling them up. They're, uh, you know, there's a there's a little intrigue with uh, 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 director Fury. Uh, you know, he's like, you know, uh, 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 Black Widow is like, you know, mistrustful of the uh, Avengers Academy. So she's like, there's a whole there's little plots and things, but really it's just a, it's just a farming game. <sighs> All right. Well, so that's what I did today instead of writing a book. If you, if, if, What's if, your book? If, if you had a book deal, you'd play video games, right? Dan? Because while you're playing video games, you're, you're not sitting there going, fuck, I want to kill myself. I wish I had a book deal. <laughs> I, 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 well, trust me. I, apparently, if you had a book deal, you'd play video games. Do you have a deadline? Like a... Yeah, 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 I do. Let's... <laughs> Oh yeah, they're 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 strict about that stuff in publishing. Yes, they, yes. Hey, can There's, you say how far off it is? It's or no? springish. <laughs> aren't we, aren't we currently in spring right now? This, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. Sp- spring 2016. Let's get down to work on this book. <laughs> or it's not? Something my agent's been telling me. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, so you got a month or two left? Jeff, or? stop. I'm it's, trying it's, to... You're, the, the, it's just that we're, we're going to come up with a name for this, the, like, the, the bloodthirst that Jeff gets. No, I, I, like, I, I'm not, this is not me trying to do a pecking party. I'm saying, like, how, 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 I, 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 this is honest curiosity. This is not me trying it's, to... It's do- due soon, dude. Okay. <laughs> I, I, how are you... Are you are you clipping along? Are you making? No, <laughs> I'm not trying to. I wrote. You. I wrote a really good introduction, and I think I have a title. And uh, is it bi- is it autobiographical? Is it fiction? Is, is it some... young adult detective series? What do you got? <laughs> please, please write a young adult detective series. <laughs> That'd be so fucking awesome. 
<laughs> Once this hits the New York Times bestseller list, I'll, they'll, people will come back to me and go, what book would you like to write next? I'll go, mm, maybe a re-envisioning of Encyclopedia Brown. <laughs> uh, yeah. That would be heaven on earth. Yeah. Or maybe a young Tony Stark. Uh, for the <laughs> Solve this mystery! Is something I should really be saying to myself right now. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just weird, right, Spencer? It's, it's almost too upsetting a joke to even try and ape and make fun of, you know? I'm kind of like not laughing at your making fun of it. That's how bad the original joke is. It's, it's upsetting. Uh, our next, our next guest... I, 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 so, sometimes sadness can be its own segue. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, our, <laughs> our next guest has appeared at clubs and colleges all over the... Uh, he's he's uh, certainly, a, certainly a, 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 a close cousin of the Harmontown family, but I don't know if he's ever been on Harmontown or not. I can't remember. I don't think he has. He, he, I maybe, don't think so. well, well, let's ask him. Uh, uh, certainly people that listen to this podcast... I can't believe that we don't remember that answer. Probably know who he is. I, uh, I, I recently called... Uh, made a, you know, called him out. Uh, uh, on his middle initial and demanded to see his birth certificate. I don't. I don't. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's brought it or not. But uh, let's 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 get to know Paul F. Tompkins, everybody. <laughs> Everybody. Hi, Internet. <laughs> you received a one Dave Klein standing ovation. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, all right. A couple of things to get out of the way. Yeah, let's get right down to it, Dan. Yeah. Well, I read, I don't know why I did this. I, I had no idea why I did this. I read an AV Club comment section. Uh, oh no! Under underneath a, an episode of Great Minds, this thing that you're going to do an episode of on the uh, my thing on the History Channel, uh, which has now been rebranded History, uh, so that it's confusing, uh, because history is a thing. It's the opposite of branding. All right. So, do you think people will look for the show just in history? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, dig up old tests that they took that their mom saved in a shoebox. Was there anything about Dan Harmon's show in here? I understand what they're doing because they're saying, well, channel, that sounds, hey, well, channel, that's my grandpa's TV's that's name. That's right. Uh, because what's a channel, yeah. uh, grandpa? But, 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 but if you take the channel off of history, you have uh, like a... Uh, you have just a word, a very, very, very vague word. And also a huge word that they are just laying claim to. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bold. Yeah, and it's, it, it, it'll, never, it'll never trend. Under, it's as dumb as naming it'll your... It'll never trend. Yeah. <laughs> it's as stupid as naming your TV show Community or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like oh, hey, how come we're not trending? Oh, but because you fucking, they had to take that word along with Justin Bieber and the out of the fucking <laughs> trending algorithm. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. The, 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 the History Channel is. <laughs> Hi, Paul. I'm, I'm, I'm right sorry. I should have told you, Paul. Yeah. Jeff's here. <laughs> the History Channel is pretty light on history now. There's a lot of UFO things and uh, like lots of weird conspiracy shit. But like, not, you're actually bringing it back. You're well, bringing it back the, to its roots with the comedy. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I applaud that 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 movement because it, we all love work, right? Um, but speaking of which, so I saw, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm gonna read no AV Club review, let alone the comment section. What was I thinking? But then someone linked a thing. I don't know what it is. If someone tweets a link and says like, "This show's great," and then they tweet a link to the review, I, I'll like get tricked into thinking it's okay to read the review, and then I'll like scroll <laughs> down. I don't know why am I scrolling down? Oh, what what, what, are, what bad thing are they gonna say about my stupid link? Night thing and the thing. So a big thing was that I ripped off dead authors podcast. <laughs> right. So, I, so, I, I, so sorry about that. I, well, I no. I mean, but so because somebody had said uh, a similar thing to me, like, "Hey, isn't this the same idea?" And it's it's not really the same idea. And also, the idea for dead authors came from 
uh, a Steve Allen show called right. Meeting of the Minds. Which is what this show came from as well, right. by Rich Corson, the Daily Show guy who's, who just created the show and hired me to, to host this pilot that didn't get picked up by IFC and then yeah. just handed over to the History Channel. Essentially, people, anyone who is old enough to remember Meeting of the Minds with Steve Allen had in the back of their head, I wish this show was entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so eventually you grow up and you take power into your own hands. It's a podcast. It's audio only. Is it? Is it? Have you have you committed it to the to the lookies? I I I, 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 I we I mean we we would do like the live shows we would do in costume. Like we would do it, you know, in front of an audience in co- in costume in character. All right, the whole so time. I ripped it off then. No, but it's not. But it's not. This, but uh, I didn't come up with. I didn't come up with the dead author's concept. I just came up with the idea of doing it as a podcast. I got invited to do the show. Um, it was invented by a guy named John Korn in San Francisco for, who uh, worked for 826 up there. And the idea was they would get someone to um, pretend to be a dead author in costume and they would like do a Q&A with people, with an audience. And then I got asked to do it with Jen Kirkman and Eddie Pepitone um, for uh, a show. It was the first time I did it. And I, for whatever reason, decided to be H.G. Wells. And it was not decided beforehand how the show was going to go. And so the idea was the three of us would just go out in front of this audience of indifferent people. And we would field questions from people who did not know what was going on and did not care. (laughs) So I said, how about I moderate it? in character and the whole conceit came up like right then it's like let's say I transported you guys in my time machine which is real and so I'll ask questions to get it going and then hopefully the audience would join in which they didn't except for one very drunk person at three in the afternoon at the West Hollywood book fair Um, and that was it and then it was a lot of fun and I said well this could easily be a, a regular show um, and that was it. Well, that it sounds like we, it is der- derivative of it. I mean, it sounds like it's, it, it bumps enough that the people in the comment section weren't huge dicks by pointing it out. I'll, when there's a dot there, they'll connect it. Then they talked about my weight. Then <laughs> they just didn't stop until, yeah. until, until, until it was rubble, just charred rubble. And I don't know, I don't understand, when did I start trying to convince people I was thin? Uh, 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 <laughs> How many times do I have to parade around and go, look how fat and drunk I am before the AV club commenters stop trying to blow the fucking lid off of it like it's all the president's men or something. I'm like, fucking like, it's not a secret, but it hurts when you say it. It hurts when you say it. Because here's my one secret that I'm sensitive about. I'm a control freak. I don't want you saying it. I say it. I say it. Me. I don't. I don't like some, some fucking anonymous person sitting there in their, their basement in Washington State. The fucking like, it looks like somebody's been hitting the Hagen Dazs. It's not fair. <laughs> that's not. That's not. That's not. It's not funny and it's not fair. Like, what, what show would you do? I bet you'd rip off a podcast too. <laughs> it's like, 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 all you're doing is talking about how fat people are. Is that a podcast? <laughs> is someone hosting that? that should Surely be. someone is. There should be. Who's fat this week? Let's take a look. It should just be a comment section podcast where it's oh, just like, uh, welcome, welcome to, uh, welcome to what just happened. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, Caterpillar sixty nine. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't riff a, a name. I just, I just, I just, I just typed that in at random when I logged in. Um, so that just happened. Uh, I'd rather die than watch that again. And you, they never tell you what they're commenting on, but they just. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with just with me as always is the person who's going to turn this into either race or right versus left. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's very it's very hard when you know those things are there, and you read if someone links to a thing that you've done. It's very hard to have the self-control to not look right. at what people are saying. Then, knowing that right under there, right. there's a bunch of fucking right. people talking about it, yeah. and they're weighing in on what they think. It's yeah. so difficult. The only good thing was it, when Community was running like at its peak, if there was a bad review of a show, it was like, this episode wasn't that great, then I'd go straight to the comment section. I was like, have at them, boys. <laughs> Pick that skeleton clean. <laughs> there's something new to fucking eat up like, like right above you fucking, uh, 
That, but I, I, it made me – because I said to Spencer on the way home, I was like – I did it the 800th time. I'm 43 years old. I've learned this lesson over and over again. I don't know why I went there. It, the only thing you could say was it's like it's just like it's, it's like picking a piece of glass up off the floor and just stabbing yourself in the face. I was in a really good mood. I went there because it, you really have to run the thought experiment of seriously, really seriously run the thought experiment of, of what happens the day that you click on the AV Club review and it says – uh, well, whatever the review says, it's, it's just a re- repeat of the press release. But then the top comment <laughs> says, "Like, Harmon's never looked better. Uh, I think he, I think this idea is very original. Uh, I think I think he's on top of his game as ever. Uh, kudos to him. Hats off to him. Uh, very funny. Very young looking. Very thin. Very sober. Uh, I salute you, sir." And then every comment for a thousand comments was, couldn't agree more. D- ditto. Uh, I second that. Here, here. I, I, I. Uh, the eyes have it. You would like scroll through that and then you'd go, well, I don't have to go there ever again. <laughs> that, well, I don't know why I'm saying the editorial you. Right. I, I would do that. I would scroll through I and go. I exactly what you mean. It's like, 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 and I, but, but that's not w- a w- real w- thing. W- wouldn't a part of like your self-loathing... <laughs> Wouldn't, I mean, obviously it's a hypothetical thing, but wouldn't, wouldn't you just automatically distrust all of that unanimous praise? Wouldn't you like, find a way to... That's what, what? I just said. Oh. Okay. <laughs> How dare you criticize me or agree with me? Yeah. Dan, you've, you've never looked better. I could blow him off for the rest of the night. <laughs> that guy's on the Fine. hook. <laughs> he drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I mean, that's terrible, right? And then, you know, I always get mad when people tweet, they tweet at me and they go, by the way, we'll ask you some questions later. The, sure. the, uh, are, are they about you? When, <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to involve you in this, in this thing. As best you can. Have people ever tweeted you and said, uh, hey, uh, uh, either, either positively or negatively, but with the like, handle on it of like, hey, I know you uh, don't like it when people uh, are positive, but... Um. No. So that's I have, like a, I have not gotten that specific. That's like a mythology I fostered somehow. So, so like people will go like that you hey. don't like it when people yeah, are people, positive. So people the two the two categories of that sub the, the, the people will go hey I know you don't I know you don't respond to people being nice so fuck off and your show's awful right. and I'm like okay I get it we run that through the periscope and the mirrors bounce and you're saying good show fuck off um, the uh, then there's the, uh, the, the actually the person that annoys me a little bit more is the sweet nice person who's saying. Uh, uh, hey, I just want to let you know I really like uh, uh, Rick and Morty, uh, uh, and, but 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 uh, I I know you don't uh, care about people who like your stuff. So, so, but 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 I thought I'd tell you anyway. And I always take back to those people. Fuck you. <laughs> That's fair. But now, but you you interact with people a lot online, right? So they know that. <laughs> But I mean, the thing is, because I don't, I don't respond to a ton of people, and I, I don't, um, I, I don't really, I don't like respond to any, certainly not anything negative, unless I am a thousand percent sure that I am. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Do you know what I mean? Like I can make a joke out of it, and I can quote the thing oh. that they said and make a joke out of it. If I just think, "Oh, this is dumb," and it doesn't actually hurt my feelings. The, 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 I just saw the Hateful Eight last night. Your your uh, the the, uh, the Tim Roth's character yeah. says, uh, "If you're if you're if you're when you're hanging somebody, if it's uh, if there's an ounce of passion to it, you sh- maybe shouldn't be hanging them." <laughs> So when you're responding to a tweet, you're, I think that's what you're saying is like you got you run it through a filter of like, am I? Is there anything happening here where I'm just not like kind of like you know a, a good professional like dealer or pit boss at, at the Tompkins Casino, <laughs> just just doing my job, entertaining, like 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 making sure everybody's like being dealt with fairly. Honestly, what it is if if it makes me laugh, if it's like someone's trying right. to say a mean thing. But it just makes me laugh. I'm like, oh, this is great, and then I will tweet that out. But I, so I don't, I don't respond a lot because it's like, where does to me, it's like, where does it end? You well, know, you mean if someone insults you and it's funny, you'll retweet it. Is that what you're saying? 
if they're trying to, if, if it's so absurd that it doesn't, it doesn't hurt his feelings. Like, yes. If, 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 if the if, intent was to hurt my feelings, but it failed. Yeah, but but, but if you if you felt any wound or any passion in it or, or any like, I gotta I gotta settle the score, you 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 leave. I that will not one, give it attention. You leave that one alone. Yes, that's very yeah, yeah, yeah. wise. That's yeah. very smart. As a result, I think because you do interact with people so much, there are people that just want your attention in some way or another. Right. And so, and I've seen this happen with other people where I've seen like somebody. Write like to uh, I forget who it was, but they wrote a bunch of positive things, didn't get a response, and then wrote a negative thing just to get a response from this person. Yeah, Dan, and then they said, "This is why I did this." Right. Dan, that has to be a huge. I'm sure you know this. That there, that has to be a, a giant part of people poking you is because they know that you might you might fire back at them and. and like, right, but but what I've what, what I find over and over and over again is that there's that that eventually they will they will. Unfollow me and block me because uh, they don't want att- just attention. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, like and I'm obsessed with, I was obsessed with that. Like go, going like, so that's the game we're playing. Like you just want my attention because then they go through all the phases where they're like, what kind of loser are you paying attention to me? And then it's like <laughs> three days later they're like, leave me alone. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, are we? Are, what are we done? I want to hang out. I want to talk to you. <laughs> You got Dan Harmon on the line. What's you? What's what's going on? How's your mom? How's your blog? Uh, but anyways, the the I, I would say that people like like you, absolutely, of course, all this is true. But when when you when you send a positive tweet to somebody, uh, you know, no news is good news. Like 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 you know. Well, you, you, you pays your money and you takes your chances. You know what I mean? Like you, you write a thing out there. The idea is that you write a thing because this is genuinely how you feel. Right, exactly. It's not supposed to be about you know what you. Of course, you hope that someone will respond. I've written positive things to people that I admired. For, uh, you know, after like hearing an album or watching a TV show or whatever, no response. And it's like, oh, it would have been nice if the person yeah. said something. But I didn't feel like I was owed that. Tell us who it was. <laughs> Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. <laughs> When she split up with Tommy Mottola, I was so proud of her. <laughs> and I was like, I wish someone would have been Twitter so I could tell her all about it. I'm not good on the timeline with when Mariah Carey left Tommy Mottola. I can't remember if Twitter was in our lives at that point. Why is his mic so loud? Are you an auctioneer? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm like a slow roll auctioneer. Paul, I don't, I don't do the fast. Thing. Paul, what is the next item up for auction? What is the next item up for bid? It is a pair of jackalope antlers. This whimsical <laughs> gift can be found all over the Tex-Mex areas of the country. <laughs> What's our starting price? <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> you can, is do that, I have a yup? Is that my? Is that my? Do, do, is that my imagination? Because because I think he just got such a, I a guess trained oh, theater I'm voice. also yelling. <laughs> Is that no one told me not to yell? <laughs> so I've been yelling the whole time. I've never trusted these things. <laughs> Dan, Dan, what what percentage of your replies to people do, do you ever reply to positive stuff? Do you go, hey, thank you, nice to hear from? Absolutely. Nice. Okay, so is, is, does that even out? Like, is it fifty? Well, I, I, there's there have been days in the in the what, fucking thirty eight years I've been on Twitter, whatever it's been. <laughs> I've got I've I've gone through different phases where because that stuff got to me where I'd make sure I'd actually count and I'd go okay fifty percent like 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 I'd just to, just to shove it up the ass of the people I hate I'm like thank you Nancy very nice to uh, be said the the blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> fucking asshole that guy back there you know like it's still worshiping at the altar of hatred mm-hmm. hey Paul yeah where do you yeah, get yeah. your suits made. Uh, I don't have a lot of suits uh, made for myself. I buy a lot of stuff off the rack. You do. I've had I had my wedding suit made for me by Mr. Lee of Fairfax Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> Very grumpy tailor who did a wonderful job making my suit. Tailors should be grumpy in my Is experience. Is it true? They ought to be grumpy. That Mr. Lee was killed by the triads for sharing his suit making secrets. <laughs> That's the story they'd like you to believe. <laughs> now your mic is way too quiet. Because he's not yelling. <laughs> I thought we were getting quiet. Okay, that's talking perfect. about the triads. <laughs> it's called modulation, Dad. He, he, he's got dynamism. He's got he's got levels. Are you hearing me exclusively through the system? You're not I don't know what me. it is. No, because because we're sitting a foot from each other. When I when I yeah. I, 
when I listen to Jeff, like, 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 I actually, it sounds like, I mean, it's just, we're amplified. I, I don't know why it's taken me 200 shows to <laughs> figure this out. Why is this guy so loud? <laughs> What's that stick he's holding? Why doesn't he lick his ice cream cone? <laughs> Who eats black ice cream? <laughs> why, whose ice cream matches their cone? <laughs> I bet that's a problem for someone. I bet there's people that can't eat ice cream in a cone because... <laughs> They would like the co- the ice cream to be the same color as the cone, and so they're stuck yeah. with like coffee. Yeah, you can maybe some butter pecan. Maybe it would be a close <laughs> right. You're talking about monochromophiliacs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet, right. I bet that's the case. I bet, the, I bet, the, I bet those let's people. Let's make the rest of the show about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I dare us. I mean, is it? Do you think it applies specifically to food? It's just food. I need all my food to be the same color, or I, I can't eat. The the, the fictional p- people. Wait, yeah. What's that? It's sexual. All right. The perfect chime in. Uh, <laughs> that, he, that, that he, works. For he everything. says that every five minutes, regardless yeah. of the topic. There, yesterday we were like, we do the show every day. Uh, we we're like. What's go? What, what you know? What's the real deal with, between the Hillary supporters and the Bernie supporters? It's sexual, <laughs> which is what got Gloria Steinem in all kinds of trouble, right? Uh, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> I don't know. I guess. I guess when in doubt make the offended sound? Uh, was that what we found? They were like, hey, oh, oh, oh. People, Wait, now, Paul. Paul yes, too. yes, Jeff, yes. Pa- Paul. Yes. You had one suit. You have one suit. I'm, I'm assuming you still have it and you haven't had it destroyed. Uh, it's a fantastic suit. I never suit. wear a suit more than once. <laughs> <laughs> that is eccentric, and I love that. Uh, you have a suit that is exactly the mayor from Jaws' suit with the, yes. an- with the anchors on it? That suit I had made as well. Of course, okay, you, you didn't get that off the rack. That was made by Cibo. Uh Not Cibot. far from here, a uh, few doors down from the improv, this guy Cibo yes. makes, he was recommended to me by Dana Gould, very funny comedian. I love Dana Gould. Um, and I had wanted, since I was a child, the blazer that uh, the mayor wears in Jaws. It's covered with anchors. It's like a powder blue kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. It's, be- it's beautiful. It's, tr- it's, it's, it's triumphant. It's tr- it is triumphant. <laughs> it's like it is a sar- sartorial Charmish. triumph. <laughs> and so I searched everywhere for it. Who's could not actor's find name? It. Sorry. Uh, Larry. No, Larry, Larry, Larry King. Larry Storch. Larry, Larry Gilmore from Pink Floyd. God Shit. Damn it. Sense no, the, the, the character's name is Larry. Larry Vaughn. All right. No, we'll, we'll, we'll look we'll, it up. We'll, Sorry, we'll, Murray Hamilton! <laughs> Murray Hamilton. Okay. Now you're yelling. Now you're yelling. It's sexual. Okay. <laughs> See? <laughs> that didn't even apply. <laughs> so I, heard, I searched high and low for this jacket. Oh, tell him. He's Good the enough. one that cares about That's your true. suit. That's true. <laughs> so I searched two high and low. There's two different podcasts going on here. <laughs> I couldn't find the jacket itself, but then I talked about it. I talked about it on a, on another podcast, and someone what other uh, video sent games me a link to the material. Stardew and they said, "Here's where you can sucks. find this material." Like they have simulator. the material laying about. They had the material laying about. It's close enough. Close enough. Close enough. And so I, I uh, get a few yards of this fabric, and I take it to uh, uh, the maestro, Cibo, and he's very excited. He likes making unusual stuff, right. so he was very excited. And uh, it was uh, perfect. It was like I had enough material to make not just the jacket, but an entire suit, entire three-piece suit. You made the vest, too? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to go back to my podium, Paul. Great talking to you. you. Jeff, always a pleasure. That was a... That was a taste of... Jeff's new feral audio podcast. Uh, 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 Jeff on men. Uh, suits me. <laughs> Listen for it. It's sexual. <laughs> How long have you been married? I've been married. It will be six years this month. <laughs> wow, we. Okay. Was I allowed? Did they turn my mic up? 
It'll be six I'm years. Sorry, this I'm month. sorry, Paul, we didn't get that. Can we do it again? I will be married six years this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it so it so it so it took it took. You're, you're, so far so good. Yeah. It took. What's your secret, Paul? What's <laughs> you and your wife's secret? Um, we don't spend a lot of time together. <laughs> we have separate residences. Um, Never actually got married. And we're not married. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. <laughs> She's a mirror. <laughs> I get dressed up as a parakeet and just yeah. just peck her. I put lipstick on the mirror so I know it's not me. <laughs> it's not another me. All right. All right. I'm like, oh, I thought that was a... What, 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 no, that's why are someone lips, else. Why, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, um, I, I don't think that six years is long enough to say, uh, here's the secret to marriage. It, 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 it is now. <laughs> It's it's getting pretty close. I mean, well, it's we, like I, I, but I, I, I think that we're going to go the distance. But you don't know, you know, you don't know, and you just try <laughs> as hard as you can. That's all I know so far. You just try and as hard. And those as you were can. your vows, which I thought were yeah. so romantic. Look, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? Uh, look, uh, I mean, we might look back on this two months from now and be like, what the fuck. <laughs> Catch as catch can. <laughs> That's how my vows started. Um, any port in the storm. Uh, I long, don't how, want to be alone. Do, uh, how long I, were you guys together before you uh, were married? Jeff, I'm going to say we were together for five years before we got married. For holy smoke. Wow. Yeah. Well, see, there's a good secret right there. It's like it's like it has something to do with ratio, like a sailboat. Actually, you know, there's more sailboat going on underneath the water. Ooh, it's sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Your lead up, you know. Yeah. Uh, which is not to say anybody who's listening, oh, I, you know, you you dated for three months and you love each other, and get married. I, I, I'm just saying, like like people who Schraub, I officiated his wedding. He, he'd been living with Kate for seven years. They mm-hmm. say, they, they, I mean, give me a break. They're not they're not gonna like come home from from the wedding and be like, you chew your cereal. <laughs> right. Like I know, I right. know. You you. Why don't that. you chew your cereal? <laughs> You're going to choke to death. I am uh, sick of giving you the Heimlich every morning. Because <laughs> it dilutes the taste to chew it. <laughs> and yet, ironically, the generations preceding us, as the uh, sort of uh, aversion to living in sin increases, mm-hmm. so does, it seems, the longevity of the marriage, right? Schraub's parents were, pro- who probably, I'm going to guess, I don't want to get invasive here, probably didn't bone till our wedding night. I don't know. They, they married right out of high school. It, oh, they, were, they, they were here on the show. They were boning, baby. They're, 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 they've been married 50 years, and, and it's like, oh, my God, the, um, it's sexual. <laughs> uh, the... the uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, who knows? I don't know. What, wait, wait, where's this going? Where, well, I mean, that's the thing. Is that no? There's no. I don't think there's any. I don't think there are any guarantees, and I don't think anyone. Uh, e- people are individuals, and they and they have their own methods of doing things. And anyone who has something successful, whether it's a career, whether it's a marriage, whatever, they assume that their way is the only way because right. results speak for themselves. But that advice might not apply to other individuals. It's like you just can't live your life by other people's example. Yeah, what if all we time? all applied the Jim Belushi method of becoming as famous as Jim Belushi? <laughs> right. Where we made our brothers become famous first. <laughs> Listen, you gotta help me out here. I need you to become famous, then get out of the way if you know what I mean. <laughs> Everyone misses you, they're like he kinda looks like him. You know what, Paul? Easy target. Come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but what's I, I don't I don't know anything about it because I don't talk about anything but myself. The uh, what, uh, what is, is your wife? Uh, what is she? Is she a spaceman? Is she no? Is she's she an inv- assassin sent to kill you, but no. then she thought better when she, she she's like turn around and you did, and she's like whoa. <laughs> Was it like Willow? <laughs> Accidental now, love potion? I don't remember a lot about Willow. But Willow, 
Who was Willow in Willow? Which character Willow was Willow? Was, uh, Willow the, was the little uh, fellow. Uh, 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 what's his fuss? Uh, Warwick. Warwick Davis. Thank you. It's sexual. Uh, I ended up waving at this person. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Val Kilmer and uh, who was Mad Mardigan? Was that Val Kilmer? That was Val Kilmer. All right. Okay, and uh, I know that uh, Rick Overton was in that movie. Was he really? A, yeah, Rick Overton was... and Kevin Pollak no were shit. two brownies. They were like little tiny guys. I love Rick Overton. Right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. French French brownies. French brownies. They were kind of doing a French thing, right? Fun. <laughs> I gotta check this movie out again. I think, <laughs> aren't French brownies soufflés or something like? Eclair? Like, they don't call them brownies in France. Is she a civilian, I, your wife? Is she no, she's a, an actress. Is she Nicole Kidman? <laughs> she is not Nicole Kidman? You have three guesses left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess based on actual like, like, like good matches for you. Good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is your wife... Paul Rudd. <laughs> that would be great. Very close. Paula, Paula Rudd. Paula Rudd. <laughs> Rudd Smith? <laughs> All right, she's an actor. We, 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 we won't drag her into this. Heard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy to tell you more That's, if you would like no, to know. Please. Tell us right out there. Her name is Janie. She is an actress. She is from South Carolina. We met in 2003 through mutual friends. Who are the mutual friends? The mutual friends are... <laughs> Paul Rudd, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> and Paula Rudd. Interestingly, we both sort of knew Paul Rudd independently of each other. And my wife spent her, I want to say, 30th birthday at uh, the disgusting karaoke bar Primetime here in Los Angeles... With Paul Rudd huh. and some other people, she she was working at um, I believe she was working at M Bar at the time as a waitress. She was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met did her. Did you meet her doing? <laughs> she was. Yeah. She literally was. Yeah. Did, did you M Bar then? So did, did you per, per chance meet her doing Beth Lapidus' show? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not set foot into M Bar. I think until after we had started dating already. Oh, so I met her at a different bar. Okay. And I was, I was leaving as she was arriving. We overlapped briefly, and we met then. Hmm. Paul, what year did you... Uh, <laughs> I'm right behind you. Where did you move to L.A. from? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What year did you come here? 1994. Now, I remember seeing you in a very early days uh, stand-up show at uh, the Onyx Cafe on Vermont, which is no longer there. Yes. And it was really early days, and, and I'd never heard, seen you before. Also, it was the first time I ever saw Sarah Silverman. Sure. Uh, I, th I think it might have been Tenacious D's first show they ever did was there. I think their first show was at uh, Al's Bar. Oh, really? I talked to Jack about this, and he goes, that might have been our first or second show, but he wasn't sure. Second. All right. <laughs> But I got to say, I remember two things about you. I remember, okay, this guy's really funny, and I liked your style, and you had a great vocabulary and a great command of the English language, but also, your suit, rumpled. You had a rumpled <laughs> suit. And then, I was like, that's the guy with the rumpled suit, but now you've, com you, you've become this like, exquisitely dressed gentleman. <laughs> and I, I, I love that about you. Uh, I think I just could not afford to have things not rumpled in those days. I think, <laughs> I think that was like all of us back then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was See, when I first saw you... S suit smooth as silk. I thought could you could be a little funnier. Sure. So I don't know if that was still true. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I'd invert the dichotomy. I guess is what I was doing. Are you still are you still doing that speakeasy show? No. I resigned from that. <laughs> I did it for a while, and it was, I enjoyed doing it for a while. It was an interview uh, series, and I interviewed Dan on it, and uh, we had a lovely chat. But it's still available. You can still find it on YouTube. Um, but I did it for a while, and then it just became um, another thing to schedule in my life, and the, the, the returns were diminishing. It was because we would shoot them four at a time. Yeah. And so, like, the first couple interviews like this is fun this is great then Mark Marin came in <laughs> <laughs> and you walked away from that one and you were like what am I doing <laughs> we, we, 
I did it so long after Mark Maron, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> I, but, um, I, just, I just conjured that name <laughs> for like maximum self-destructiveness. <laughs> Uh, but it was fun for a while, but then I eventually it was I had other things going yeah. on, and it was like it just wasn't stop being fun. Yeah. Stop being fun. You will find when you come and do this show for the for history uh, <laughs> for the history flux um, <laughs> that I I, I am uh, approaching that uh, event horizon burnout. Oh, okay. <laughs> I may be a husk of a man when you are. How many have you shot so far? Uh, I don't. I, I've, I've lost count, which is good. Like Something nine, like nine, nine yeah. or nine or ten. They've all been great. Who's that over there? Hey, <laughs> how's it going? I see you. Oh yeah. Spencer, have you been here this whole time? Yeah, I didn't have anything to chime in until just right there. <laughs> About nine, you know. That's what I got. Spencer, are you enjoying uh, being an actor on the show? You, you have a good time? Uh, it's, it's weird. I mean, the hard part about acting, as best I could tell, is memorizing and reciting lines. And we kind of do it all improv style. So it's just like, whatever you think of to say, just say it. And, you know, it's a lot easier when you're not trying to hit lines. Yeah. And by the way, I know it gets frustrating when I come in and I go, "That script is done. We're gonna throw it out. We're gonna improvise the stuff." But then when you you did a whole scene, he did like what an hour and a half, two hours of straight improv with Nick Kroll. That. Just two. So it's like like it was uh, Kroll. I'm not spoiling anything. Kroll plays Sigmund Freud, and he he psychoanalyzed Spencer for two hours. It was all one take, but not. And Spencer when, just just answered honestly. I was like the perfect actor. Like you do, you were per- acting perfectly. And then and then and then uh, and then Steve Levy uh, came in and played himself, and he did it perfectly too. Uh, but we're we're not going to do two hour takes, right? No, 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 no. I, 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 are we allowed? To, are we allowed to know who Paul's going to portray? Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. Unless you have some reason to not. Uh, I, <laughs> I no, I'm I'm cool with this. <laughs> I'm cool with it being out there. I like to. Isn't it? I believe you're going to play Edgar Allan Poe. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. A lot of Poe fans. Who has who has figured into my life in a weird way because the 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 place where my wife grew up on Sullivan's Island, South Carolina, um, there's a lot of Poe stuff there because he spent um, a, as as Edgar Allan Poe seemingly did all over the fucking place. He spent a good amount of his life there, and uh, uh, his his uh, story, The Gold Bug, is uh, inspired by Gold Bug Island. Hmm. Um, there in South Carolina. What happens in the gold bug? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I remember the gold bug from the Richard Scarry novels. <laughs> Who's a children's author? And this is, no. Is it Scarry or Scarry? I never knew how to pronounce scary. his name. Oh, I always said Scarry. Because he's got the two R's. Oh, is this another Bernstein kids, Bears? Thing? Either way, it's terrifying. <laughs> either way, it's, there, it's terrifying. There's a kid's show, and they said Scarry, so I think, yeah, Scarry. Oh, you're going to trust LeVar Burton? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How's that working out for you? He trust said he was going to come Burton. to my wedding, remember? <laughs> he doesn't yeah. know how to pronounce anything. Oh, uh, that's probably why I got divorced with LeVar. <laughs> and he'll fire back, no, that's why I didn't come, because I knew you weren't going to stay married. <laughs> it's going to go back and forth. It's going to be a whole thing. Me and LeVar Burton. And then it's like you have to go back through the tweets to see where it started, like right. who was the first one yeah. to say something. And it's like it all starts with him going like, hey, I know you don't respond to positive shit, so fuck off. Uh, uh, do you have children? No. Yeah. That sounds, nothing, like, that nothing sounds, like, that sounds like you don't want to nothing children. Nothing against them. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think we do. Yeah. I don't think we do. Not looking for it. No. Hey, here's I something against okay. children. Too many of them. <laughs> Uh, there's that, plenty to go around. They, 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 they can be as offended as they want of that. <laughs> do, they, wait, do you think children themselves would be offended? Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> we're children. Well, who would be? Like two people who had kids and they're like, oh, yes. they're, they're listening with That's the kids. That's who would be offended. And they're like, not having children. And they'll go, hey, we had kids. It's like, they're, well, yeah, more food for him. <laughs> more food for him. Some, somebody's got to stop. The hardest part of being a parent is going to where the child food is kept. And there's like all these other children. And it's like, how are we going to get in there? Because they're just like, the kids are like spin over the trough. And they're just like. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> and then a kid falls in. Red light goes on. 
Everyone out. We got an Augustus Gloop situation here. <laughs> uh, Do you want to be a dad? I, 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 uh, I, I, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm so old now anyway, like, like, who cares, you know, like, who I don't cares? know. I used to think like the second half of a full life would, would you know, involve having kids and, but, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm now post-divorce, I'm like sort of, I, I figure, I, I made mistakes that affected other people's lives by making assumptions about what I was supposed to do, what I wanted to do. <sighs> it's sexual. Uh, the, uh, but so, and so I'm just sort of, sort of in this clean slate kind of mode where I'm fetishizing uncertainty. Mm-hmm. My therapist told me, "Don't be certain about anything, Dan Harmon." Ooh, it's very formal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she said, "I in particular have a problem with certainty." Well, who doesn't? I mean, I Sherlock feel, Holmes. Like you, it's just a good man. You fucking nailed it. <laughs> uh, Look, I asked and answered. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Mr. Rourke. Uh, I need- <laughs> <laughs> Knight, the, the car and Knight Rider kit. Uh, I, want, I am on the verge of rewatching Fantasy Island. I want to absolutely. We're going to remake that show. I, Be- that, which they, do you remember when they remade it with, uh, what? what's his name, with uh, Malcolm McDowell? No. They did it for, yeah. Uh, there, there was a brief weird. I mean, not, not Malcom McDowell. I don't care. <laughs> like, you're fine. There was a brief weird remake with uh, Malcolm McDowell. But I, I, I don't, I mean, like, because it's, I just, uh, Chris McKenna and I are always talking about uh, uh, Fantasy Island because I, I it's, it's like, well, there was this show, kids. Uh, it was a, it was, it was, it was prime time. It was, it was, it was as, as well regarded as Orange is the New Black. It was like, you know, <laughs> it was. We didn't have, we didn't, we hadn't splintered our audience into a million pieces back then. It was like the. Hold the, on a second. I feel that is a tad misleading. <laughs> there were no one was talking about Fantasy Island the way they talk about it. Aren't just the new. Place. I don't know if that's I I I, I, the, I mean what at the water cooler just going. Did you see it last night? Yes, I did. They I mean, talked I, about it. Yeah, but I would not say that the they, subjective it was ex- held in the same regard as this. <clears throat> I felt that Fantasy Island dealt with queer issues pretty much the same way. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are talking about content and specificity of that stuff. I'm talking about culturally. Back then, there were three networks. Mm. Um, the uh, Incredible Hulk series won the Emmy for Best Dramatic Series. <laughs> it, was pretty, uh, it was a pretty dramatic show, the, in all fairness. <laughs> The winner of the best best female lead in a dramatic series was the Bionic Woman. Um, it was before they changed the name of the category. <laughs> well, what, wait, what is it? I think it's best actress. That's sexist. It used to be best best female lead. <laughs> um, the uh, anyways, Fantasy Island was a show where. Uh, a seaplane would land, and a guy in a oh, white... Oh, we're going from the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. A guy in a white suit would come out, because first what would happen is a, is a little person, uh, a Everybody tattoo, should. would go, Deplane, Deplane, Boss, Deplane. And then the seaplane would land, and it would be this title sequence for Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island is a resort where all your fantasies come true. Now, here's, you're going to have a million questions in a second. Because a seaplane would land, and three guest stars would get off. Yeah. Same as the love boat, yeah, except ja- on the love J- Jacqueline boat. Jacqueline Bissett would get off, and uh, and Robert Wagner, Robert Wagner, and uh, and uh, Ernest Borgnine, <laughs> um, and 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 and, the, and Tattoo would go, "Who's that, boss?" And the, Mr. Rourke would say, a "Tattoo, that is William Salkind. He wishes he could be a concert pianist." Um, so it was just three people getting off the plane, but the resort was, f- and, and then so what would happen to Mr. Salkind is he would end up being a concert pianist but he would also find out he didn't really want to be right yeah he, everyone would learn a lesson so, it was what, like they should have called a fucking oh henry island the, <laughs> they, sh- they should have called the better business bureau because <laughs> but they were everyone was satisfied at the end I, but everyone yeah. was satisfied, every, at the end they were all like hey guess what mr Rourke? <laughs> you pulled a fast one but i gotta admit 
you made me realize I didn't want to be a concert pianist after all. Yeah. So and, now and I then, can stop then, thinking about and it. And then during the credits, which you wouldn't see, the, uh, <laughs> Mr. Rook would pull up each aside and go, thank you so much. If you would be so kind as to n- tell no one about th- what yeah. goes on Please here. Please don't reveal the shocking secret. then secrets. no one will ever come yeah, here because exactly. no one, you may all be leaving and thinking, <laughs> oh, thank you so much for showing me that my fantasy about being a, 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 a gentleman uh, uh, in the 1800s uh, led to my mistake. Misogyny and I had to solve it and all this shit, but but no one's gonna come here for that, right? Like, no, one's like, come, no one's coming to learn a lesson. No one got their fantasy. Nobody, Everyone got it right up. Nobody the, ever got what they wanted ever. Like they got what they wanted and then some. Like they all right. walked away going, "Huh, I shouldn't have wanted but that." No, no, nobody said, which is right, not but, what you get from Cheetos. Uh, Ooh, wait, there, yes, it is. Then there were things like there would be a thing like like some little nerdy dude was like, "I want to be a big He Man or whatever. I want to be like a cool guy," and then he. Would discover that the coolness was within him the whole time. Right. right. You know Which I mean? means that, yeah, he had to clean the pool. It's like, when's my <laughs> fantasy going to start? Don't you understand? When that guy picked on you, you stood up to him. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I gave you like $5 million. <laughs> oh, that's... They never got into how much it, had it to, cost to have your fantasy. It here's the be, other thing. It so, had to be expensive. It had to be expensive. So every yeah. establishing shot. They're hiring shot. actors. They're putting people in alien costumes. Like, Prohibitively, all of this wait, shit. What? Prohibitively Paul. expensive. Paul. Costumes? Mr. Rourke was magical. Well, now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. In later seasons... It was revealed that Mr. Rourke had mysterious supernatural powers, and we learned this when he had to do battle with the Satan, devil, portrayed by, <laughs> portrayed by. Who's your number one pick to play Satan? Evil well, Incarnate. Ricardo Montalban in a split screen, but that would have been great. That actually would have made a lot more sense. But if you can't do that, let's say Ricardo, he's got. T- Terrible back pain. It's all he can do. This is actually true. It's all he can do uh, to shoot, like, just Mr. Rourke's parts. Of course, you go out to Roddy McDowell. <laughs> Roddy McDowell played Satan. Well, that's good. Okay, so you're, you, you're, you know more about Fantasy Island than I do. You're saying there was, I know a, good there was a Casino Royale era of Fantasy Island that was pre- super supernatural. I think where they didn't... Yeah, they did not acknowledge that he had... Powers. It because was just I like, saw, all I remember is like two women that wanted to wanted to uh, experience adventure or something, and they woke up in dinosaur times. <laughs> and there were cavemen trying to like you know w- ravish them, whatever the whatever the eighties term for it is. Right. And then Mr. Rourke came out of the woods going, oga, boga, 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 boga. but he was like prosthetically done up like a caveman. And then he ripped off his mask, but he was a he was Mr. Rourke. But it was like they were there were dinosaurs. I remember. Anyways, my question question is this when they would show so they would cut their interstitials they would they would they would go like oh that that person's fantasy is going on he's a concert pianist oh, that woman's in dinosaur times <laughs> mr rourke and tattoo would be walking or somebody would be walking and go like oh yeah, fantasy what an island and uh in the background there's all these people that aren't working there they're customers too they didn't get off the seaplane what package did they get? Like, and how much of their fantasies are happening? I mean, they, are they just getting anal beads? Like, 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 <laughs> like, like they don't get they don't get greeted by Mr. Rourke. That's like Captain Steubing's maybe, table. Maybe it's they like, got a, maybe there's, there's flights happening all day long. We just get to see one or two, you know, like a week. You know? Well, Tattoo does say the plane, plane. <laughs> right? right? He doesn't say one of the plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another plane, boss. <laughs> also. Another plane. Why the, the, the 815? Why, the 815. Why is why is the briefing happening as the people are getting off of the yeah, plane? Think, it's like, who's this one, boss? And it's like, oh, I, well, I guess I should have told you this. Well, why does Tattoo have to know? Yeah. Yeah. The, well, uh, well, also, Tattoo. What's his job? Is his job just to alert him to the presence of the plane? <laughs> Listen, Tattoo, I put a folder in your room every morning. I, I, I don't even know why I go through the trouble of uh, boss, trying to put these dossiers Boss, what together. about my fantasy? Well, Ta- tattoo. We uh, all know. Illiteracy does not count as a fantasy. <laughs> You're just being lazy. But my was, fantasy is you learn to read. There was an episode where Tattoo had to be a spaceman. He had to be a little Martian. And he had to put on green makeup oh, and a bald cap and everything. So it's, it's, it's 
left it very unclear as to how this whole operation works. And I think that in the in the earlier before you know Satan shows up, they they tried to. I think the idea was that it was just mysterious. Like, how do you do this? And he's like, I wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. And that was well, it. it's nine so, eleven. So, it's nine eleven. Yes. Let's to plane. All right. Oh, uh, Paul. Paul. What, what's Paul, happening? Paul. Uh, we we at Harmontown cheer when it's nine eleven on the clock. <laughs> It's it's a it's a it's a rich history. I'm I'm glad to see that people <laughs> never forget to do that. <laughs> uh, even, uh, even a broken clock, it's nine eleven twice a day. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> but, but a broken clock remembers twice. <laughs> But five years from now, when 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 McKenna and I do the because we want to write this pilot, and it's just this is not gold bullion idea either. But and I'm sure you've come up with it as well. But like the ultimate workplace comedy is just like what? Yeah, <laughs> the you fucking the you work at Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island yeah. and it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like like you're 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 the house to clean the room, and it's, right. like, it's like what the fucking lizard skin <laughs> and the and it's like what's going on? You know, it's like like some people getting drawn in, and it's like mm-hmm. like like you have to put on this wizard costume and. Um, what is that contract like? Like you must sign. There's got to be so many things that you're just signing away. Like, look, you. <laughs> A vampire might attack you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but you either want to work here or you don't. I bet you find out if you talk to a, a worker at Fantasy Island long enough, I bet you find out that they're like, they're, there's like a tiny like dot like like right under their hairline and, and like there's some weird microsurgery that's happened where they're like, they've been lobotomized. I bet you're right. <laughs> Or or it's magic and they just forget when they fly out of the fog of Fantasy Island. But why does if when, when the supernatural thing? Can you imagine the the, the Fantasy Island writers room? Because 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 the you know the showrunner was like guys 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 we've been over this. The minute we jump that shark, people are gonna ask why does Mister Rourke need money? Like why is he why is he running a business? I, he, I think if you ask if, if you if you like created a Fantasy Island right now and you said okay I'm hiring. Uh, it's it's. Do you, does anybody want to live on an island and role play all day long? Like like, like you, we've been to the Re- Renaissance Fair. I think you could find people. <laughs> I bet there's like, ten people here who want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's high stakes LARPing, man. Be, the people would be all all over that shit. Oh, you got to be a concert piano teacher. I I I, I used to be a concert. Like, they would love it. They'd freak out. You got to play an alien. You got to you got to get killed by a vampire. That'd be the best. That would be a great like uh, kind of a. Murder mystery kind of evening where there was no. You're just like one person has to be the pianist, but <laughs> I don't know. I guess it just stops there. There's like someone's just at the Wait, piano. Did it start? <laughs> I was just imagining. I mean, I just get to that point in the show where I'm so drunk. It's not. It's the, the only only the first forty minutes of the show is usable. Uh, but like just like a like a like a role playing event where you show up and you get a card, but it says like, oh, I'm the I'm the piano player, but like you just you, the, so the the. <laughs> get again. Keep going. <laughs> We're going to support you all the way through this. I, 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 don't, know this what to... I don't know what my point is. No. I, you know what? I, I, I always want. The, 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 Aaron, my ex-wife, used to. We used to have like she, she would have like these theme birthday parties, like or parties, like 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 we would like, try to get everybody together and try to like create our own things mm-hmm. or like that. Or she actually ordered some online and stuff. Like I would get really into those things. There was and... one she did that was so complicated. I still don't know what was happening. You had to break up into groups, do a painting. Remember that yeah. one where there was all sorts of... Wasn't there of- a jail in that one? You get sent to jail? I. <laughs> there, there was a... Dan and Aaron shot a video... A video I intro. I didn't... That you, yeah, and I, I'm telling you, I, I, this, is, this is not me talking trash. I, I, I was paying attention. I don't know what was going on at all. And we were looking around like, I don't... Did anybody catch that? Like, we were freaking out. And like, we, they, we oh, just, like, like, you because you didn't catch what the, the rules were or the, what the... The, the, the gameplay was complicated, I, 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 is, is my recollection. There was, a, there was a lot happening. There was arts and crafts, and there was, there, I think, a murder, and then, you, then some people will go to Guantanamo Bay for a while. Yeah. And, like, it was... <laughs> it was a, it was a space station. The party was a space station, and you, you, you were notified a couple of weeks in advance, like, what... Uh, Species of alien you represented, so they were like that was, that was the cool part. It was like I like that. Yeah. There were people that were like, "Oh, we're the garbage people," and so they were like, 
like like people who made clothes out of garbage and blah blah blah. You know, you were one of a, several different species and all that stuff. And uh, but th- you know, there were extra rules and stuff and whatever. We we, we have our own problems. So let's not let's not. <laughs> you know, if, if, if the, the, what's the best case scenario of proving that Aaron McGathy's birthday party was shitty? <laughs> You know. Are you asking me? No, I know. Like, okay. Well, I, I am not. I am not prepared to answer that. Uh, it was a, there was there were too many rules, too many power crystals and things. Oh yeah, there was, there was marbles and crystals you had to find. Pe- yeah. People were drunk, and so they were yeah. just like, "What's going on?" I don't know. Yeah. And then they just wandered. I hid in the basement. There, that was the prison. Yeah. And, you, you hid? Well, you, I mean, I wasn't hiding because if you did something wrong, you had to go to the prison anyway. So I just stayed in the prison. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, earlier, uh, I think the year before that, there was the murder mystery, the, the 20s gangster thing, and I got killed, like, right off the bat, and so I just, I got, I died upstairs in a room that nobody came in for, like, an hour and a half, so I'm like, I'm gonna lay face down for as long as it takes, and I, like, I, I was underneath a coffee table in a way that there was no way you could possibly land in there, like, I'm like, well, it's like... <laughs> Like, you couldn't have landed like that. Was that because just par- to make a better picture? Yeah, just to make it like people go, Jesus, that guy died and it was complicated. We don't, we don't know what happened. <laughs> but then I'm like, okay, now I'm face down and I, I'm just, I'm in a pile of dog hair forever for the rest of my life. And then it became a, like a challenge. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm going to stay here forever. <laughs> All How right. long was it before people discovered you? Uh, Maybe 40 minutes. Oh, God. <laughs> That's too long. It felt like an hour and a half. So it's a murder mystery where <laughs> they don't discover the murder. Well, people kept dying all over the place. Like, I wasn't the only... I, I think I was one of the people that died, but I died right off the bat. Somebody came up and handed me a card. You're dead. And you're, you're not allowed to say anything. You're just supposed to be dead on the spot. Right. So I was like, okay. So I laid on the ground. Then I realized nobody was looking for me because right. I, I was up... I, I was in the, the attic. <laughs> and, what were you doing up there? Uh... I, I was supposed to go up there for some reason. It was, I was I was on a mission to go to talk killed. to somebody or do a thing, and it turns out I was on a mission for murder. Right. <laughs> but I want to I want to do a good one of the you know like I I, I w- that would be fun like doing doing like uh, you know like getting into it. I, 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 I'd love it. I wanted to. I was like w- walking around. I was like, you need to get, get off my uh, beeswax, Mister. Like I was like get I wanted to be a twenties guy. All right, let's uh, let's break. <laughs> Guys, right now I am probably a quintillionaire on my uh, on your lemonade stand. My iPad, so I don't care. Do you want to try a little like, murder mystery? Can we? Can we? Can we do one here? Is it take too much planning? To, oh, to... oh, oh! How much planning could All right, it take? Let's, let's bring out Demorge Brown and. Okay. and uh... All right. What's that? Uh, yeah, you stay there. Oh yeah. Okay, all right. What's the what's the quick way to do this? Okay, uh, uh, I th- that's I think this is more Spencer's bailiwick than anybody's. Like he's the oh Spencer's just gonna reject the whole thing. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> uh, it was gonna that was gonna go one or two ways. I've already done him. All right, I'll, 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 I'll tell. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna improvise like the information you'd get on like a murder mystery night card. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> Demorge, how have you been? I've been quite fine. Thank okay. you. I last time I saw you was on Dead Authors. I think. I think so. Although right. I saw you uh, in Bajillion Dollar Properties. Oh, that's great. That was a delight Bajillion to Dollar see Properties. You. Uh, uh, that's great. <laughs> How are you? It's on CISO. <laughs> Paul F. Tompkins plays the patriarch of a uh, of yeah. a realty company. Uh, Demar, you, you, you did one, right? One or more? Yeah, yeah. I'm the. He's in the first one. Yeah. yeah. When they go to uh, Adam Scott's house, I'm the. I, I poor, did. I did, guys the, I, I did a, a bit on one too. I'm sad I didn't get to do it with either of you two. Jerry Minor was on one? All right, let me tell Jamorge's character. All right. You talk uh, to Spencer for a second. Spencer! Hey. How's it going? Thanks for doing Harmon Quest. What is way. it? Absolutely. It's my pleasure. I had a great time. Yeah. I can't wait to see the, uh, the finished part. When do they start rolling those out? Oh, you know. 
<laughs> we had an air date, and then they pushed it, and so now I felt, and and then we didn't say that air date, so now I feel even more loath to say the air date, but it should be <laughs> June something. Of this year. <laughs> of this year, unless okay. it gets pushed again, yeah. It was going to come out earlier, but then they rolled it out. They were like, it's going to be the binge model. And I can't talk to you anymore. It's fine. <laughs> Okay. So, Demorge, Dem- Dem- you yes, talk sir. to Jeff. Yes, sir. Demorge, uh, Ar- Arsenal, uh, about eight, eight, ten points back right now in the uh, British Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big story that everybody's mm-hmm. talking about, except you guys, <laughs> are that uh, first place in England right now, the Leicester Foxes, yeah. which is like the Bad News Bears winning the World they, Series. They were the worst team last year. And every week, people have said, one day these guys are going to lose, and it'll be an admirable cause. And but they, they look like a well-oiled machine. They just keep going. All right, that's enough soccer. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you and Demar, Joe, why don't you guys catch up? Uh, well, uh, we started to, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we were interrupted. interrupted by the host of the show. Uh, Demar, uh, these elbow, I want to talk about your elbow patches and the sweater. What, what, what material are these elbow patches? Because from here, they look like carbon fiber. <laughs> are Precisely they carbon the point. fiber? They are. They, they act as brake pads. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times I have to slide head first into situations and fix shit. And the only way to stop is these to These aren't elbow pads. Them. They're... Brake uh, pads for a sex machine. Uh, good shout out to the people. <laughs> <laughs> I got to thank the people from Bendix for these. Bendix. That's good. Uh, and, and they are loaded with asbestos, so <laughs> you're all going to get You look it. like the guy that I would hire if I needed to have somebody assassinated aboard an old whaling vessel. <laughs> <laughs> We're the perfect just, disguise, man. just enough people where you, you wouldn't get to know everyone. <laughs> so... <laughs> There would be some strangers oh, wait, maybe on the whaling. We have to leave shadows. <laughs> yeah, blend man. in. Yeah, it's a big whaling wh- wh- yeah. vessels. There was maybe 200, 300 people aboard those those, those larger ships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read Moby Dick. Do <laughs> <laughs> you ever read Moby Dick, Paul? Yeah. I've not read Moby Dick, but I read uh, In the Heart of the Sea, yeah. the book that was uh, uh, about the, the 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 trip that inspired Moby Dick. Right. Yeah. Uh, much better book than a movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you saw that, I movie. heard. It. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> My word, it's this storm has given me such a fright. I, s- I, I say the weather is a bit dreeks right now, isn't it? Well, why not? A bit what? Dreeked? It's Scottish, you know. I'm not Scottish, I'm English. Well, but I've been all over the United Kingdom. Well, hey, come on, you guys. This weather's a bit rough. Is it? Is I'm it? sorry, was I going on? Well, uh, isn't that your way? To sneak into a room and take anything you want. Oh, no. Well, fucker. You. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, I haven't had the pleasure of your acquaintance, sir. I, I, it seems a bit warm language for, for a new acquaintance. That's fine. Excuse me. Sorry. I didn't expect things to... Oh, I didn't see you well, standing. Now, who is this gentleman? <laughs> I am the butler, Mr. Hosterson. <laughs> Mr. Hostess, and I object to the language I was being treated with by this gentleman over here. Now, now, you all have complicated backstories <laughs> that overlap with each other in intricate ways. Yes, for instance, I'm an explorer. <laughs> you can see how that weaves into your complex stories. Ah, an explorer, then we should have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I sh- should say. Y- you should all uh, you be uh, thanked for coming here on, uh, through such a terrible weather. Uh, this being the front room of the, of the antechamber. Um, there are six antechambers, each with a front room. But let's skip all that. And please... Come into the drawing room. Oh, what a lovely yes. drawing room. I'll take room, your yes. coats, yes. starting with you, sir. Not starting with a lady, the very idea. <laughs> I, oh, I, Mr. I, Hostesson, start with a lady. I'm be quite very sure. glad that there's a man between you and that animal rascal bastard bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all of this masculine energy has given me the vapors. <laughs> I am quite sorry, madam. Uh, I'll take your coat. I don't oh, believe we've uh, been you. introduced. My name is Madam Beauregard. I am a, a lady of the South. 
Well, that's a very well-developed character. Thank you. Thank you. You know my gender and origin I come from. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, but done on the fly, I mean, that's... Oh, right, wait, I'm British. Um, Are you? <laughs> Uh, uh, you had your coat, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, be very careful with this. It's green felt. Oh, wh- wh- why is that? Well, they give you one when you reach a certain level at the academic institution that I've come from. They give you one to put you, you get into the faculty room and get the mustard sandwiches all by yourself with coats so they cut the crust off the sandwich. <laughs> What is all this rigmarole? What what does this character even... You sound to be a man of academia. I am. I focus on economics and Schumpeter, specifically until I became a single man, and then I focused on specifically the um, economics of the bachelor. uh, uh, I I think that's the the plot of community. (laughs) What should say? What, what's your name? Buttmunch. <laughs> Professor Buttmunch. If I may, Professor, what are the, the economics of The Bachelor? Is it things like eating the peanut butter directly out of the jar so as to <laughs> save money on washing dishes? It goes further than that. You have to understand if the peanut butter is crunchy, directly out of the jar simply will not do. Oh, I forgot. Um, I, 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 I should get the door. Uh, uh, mar- mar- uh, uh, Marissa, I forgot there should be a murder victim. Marissa, come in here. Oh, the, the, the sit, sit, the sit in the chair there. Mind you, the... uh, this is uh, Lady Lady Florentine of the of the of the Flor- Florent Flor- Formans. Hello. Um, uh, 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 if you want to say anything, you'll get killed in a minute. Uh, thanks for having me. Good to be here. <laughs> And uh, your coat, sir. Thank you. I think I'm Colonel Assmaster. <laughs> <laughs> These names are very, very imaginative for someone coming up with them right on the fly like this. Very colorful, I will yes. agree. Mm. <laughs> and you, sir? The name is Spoonerson. <laughs> Sounds like someone got tired of making up names. <laughs> Uh, as they went from one side of the stage to the other. <laughs> Got so caught up making up the name that they just threw in your occupation at the end, which was... Explorer. Right. <laughs> oh, God, the lights went out. Turn out the lights. Why, well, it's so dark. Oh, what oh, is oh, happening? Oh, the lights oh, have I am a fiat uh, for my first name. The, 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 the lights are still on. The lights are still on. Yeah. 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 I can see everything that's happening. Oh, no. you can't turn it off. I really I just, I just, is that what happened in your I really said it so formally. Right. Ooh, ooh, okay. ooh, ooh. Now you just, you ooh. Know, you most of the to, lights have ooh. gone out. Ooh. <laughs> I can, st- I can still kind of see everything. Do something I can comfortable. Still- the lights are gradually going out. <laughs> I am growing ever more terrified. Everybody just well, close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. Oh, uh, except for that one camera phone. The lights have gone out. I can tell you as a bachelor, sometimes your lights go out when you least expect it. You thought you paid the bill and you skipped the month. More of these bachelor clump, economics. Clump, 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 clump. <laughs> lights, lights. I found the circuit breaker. I found it. What? Man, oh, there's oh. been a murder. Oh. What? I, th- oh. I think yeah. I know who did it. A horse riding a motorcycle. <laughs> Hold on one second. There was a... T- <laughs> There was a chainsaw in there, too, so they may well have been in a car. Oh, it's a chainsaw. I, I, I do apologize. <laughs> I'm unaccustomed to such machines. Yes. You know, in my travels, I... <laughs> ooh, ooh, the, 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 the body seems to have horse prints and gunshot and chainsaw marks all over her. I say, what, 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 a, dread, what a dreadful thing. Of this, course, the right. constabulary is held up by the storm, so we'll have to stay here until they show up. How but did that horse get away in that motorcycle if the storm is so bad? Well, I'm, I, would, I would hazard a guess that it was a Lipizzaner stallion, among the smartest <laughs> next to the Arabians. Ah. Not only can they hold a man, but they can ride a chainsaw. Very sensible. <laughs> 
Why would this storm be holding up the police? Are they ain't squad cars made of sugar, sir? <laughs> Oh, ma'am, I would suggest you take a look at a movie called The Shining. Um, well, one thing's for certain. Yes. <laughs> the murderer is in this very room. Oh, oh, there's such good news. Scotland Yard is here. Detective Steve Levy. How did he get into the, did he get into the storm? Uh, he, he was here already uh, patrolling the barn. What? <laughs> Ooh. Detective Steve Levy. Oh, Inspector. Oh, yeah. uh, Detective, I can tell by your stance and posture you are a lonely man. God damn. It's all in the degree. It's pretty good. Inspector, I beg of you to solve this murder quickly. This puts me in mind of when my own dear husband was murdered. You say that you oh. are already have, have a murdered spouse? Well, that casts the light of suspicion on you right away. Right away. What? One, one murdered spouse does not a murderess make, sir. <laughs> what is this, the staircase? <laughs> <laughs> My husband was murdered by an owl. <laughs> Under what circumstances? He was at the top of the stairs arguing with an owl. <laughs> Things got heated. <laughs> Well, uh, this, this is an active... I said that sounds like a real who hey, done it. Hey, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this, this is an active crime scene. I think everyone should clear out. We'll put, we'll put around the yellow police tape and draw the outline of the body. We'll, oh my goodness, We'll sir. bring in the crew, clean up. We're dealing with dignified company here. So do you need us to leave the room while you do all this? <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe you should stay and help me? Now, this seems highly irregular <laughs> that the suspects in the murder investigation have to do the busy work of sealing the crime scene. It seems counter to your purposes, if you don't mind my saying so. I am just a woman from the South. <laughs> Well, one thing is for certain, sir. <laughs> if it would be all right with the constabulary, I believe the deceased corpse should be removed from the antechamber into the... Oh, I wasn't saying that you had to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> for a moment there, but I saw that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, Marissa, like you can... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Marissa has the corpse, everybody. It will take it will take two people who will split off into a different scene um, to move her the, her body uh, into the uh, uh, ice box. <laughs> well, this is a grisly affair. <laughs> well, seeing as how I'm a soldier and been accustomed to being around bloody scenes before, I'll. Lend a hand, I suppose. Do we have another volunteer? Are we, are we all British it's now? It's entirely of possible I'm that British. I might I'm be willing to uh, volunteer to assist this rascalion. What say you? Shall we? I don't see any reason for you to have such anger towards me, sir. Well, but the deed must be done, so let's do it together. Heave ho, lend a hand, sl- cl- clap to that slab line, and hoist away on the on the on the, on the mizzen mast. Should, should we check with the police? If yeah, this is, this is okay? highly suspicious. <laughs> well, is it, if this it, is a crime scene. Were you, you, wasn't it you that just said? I, we need to investigate. Well, I, he, I, Mr. Hostess said, there's an account very wisely said we should put the body into the icebox. I mean, that's suspicious. <laughs> This is a very... Yes, Mr. Hostess, and why should we move the body away from the crime scene? And why the icebox? I mean, you done this And before? whose house is this? <laughs> <laughs> and, why are, and why are we all here, for pity's sake? We never, that was never really made clear in the invitation. Why these four different people were asked to your home? We As just received like a the mysterious cube. invitation. <laughs> that is come correct. To, come to this mansion. You won't regret it. <laughs> well, it... It won't satisfy you further to know that I received a similar invitation which simply added, be the butler. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, do you mean to say you are not a proper butler? 
Oh, oh my words! Take I take much umbrage at your tongue wagging. I, I do. I'll apologize. forgive you as you are a colonist, but I am from three generations yes. of, of manservants. Sergeant, Sergeant Levy, but someplace else. Sergeant, Sergeant Levy, if I may pull you aside for a moment, Sergeant Levy. Yes. If I may pull you aside for a moment, it seems to me that the, the, the main suspect here must be the host of this party that's never shown himself, uh, invited to a strange room, and that of strangers, a um, murder. Uh, who, who is this host that sent out these invitations? It, I think he is your suspect. Yeah, well, I, you're accusatory. I, I don't know anything about anyone here. I just, I just arrived. There's a body. <laughs> if, if I, I, if is, I may, this is insane. If I may, yes. you, you're all a bunch of characters. You seem to, you seem to be a well developed characters. I would say, sorry, very well developed. So well. Maybe you heard my husband got murdered some time ago. Uh, <laughs> By an owl, she says. An owl, indeed. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, my wife disappeared in much the same manner as a death. By the hands of a man, a man took her away with wily wiles. <laughs> he left a scent in my house that could only be described as cologne. I know it because I wear it as such to try to procure another lady. Are you accusing me of something? If, if you have an accusation to make, so I suggest you make I've never smelled that that scent before. Until tonight. What a... From that side of Yes, the it's true. I did run away with your wife, but I was not responsible for her disappearance. She left and I was, uh, I was as much shocked as anybody. <laughs> she hates horses. Well, I suppose... <laughs> Not having done any of these, that it's time to pick who's the killer? You know, no! <laughs> Mr. Hosterson! Mr. Hosterson! Mr. Hosterson. If I may! Is if this I... one of these situations Mr. where. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hosterson, if I may! I, I, there's someone who's been uh, conspicuously silent during all this. I agree. Oh, yes. Yes. The straight I agree. explorer fellow. This explorer. Now, now, sir, first of all, I will forgive you not removing your pith helmet in the presence of a lady. <laughs> but why are you so strangely silent, sir? There has been a murder. Because there's two things I know. One thing is that I'm an explorer. <laughs> and two things are that <laughs> ass master embezzled butt munch at some point. It's a plot point, and that might be relevant to this whole scenario we've found ourselves in, because otherwise, why would I know that? <laughs> My goodness! What a cat's cradle of well-crafted character! It's as if some master storyteller, I'm, off the top of his head, wove a spider's web of delight! Indeed. Let me ask a question of these two gentlemen. Did you know the deceased lady? Mrs. Uh, Florentine? Of course we all knew Mrs. Florentine. She was the biggest... The biggest, the biggest socialite like, in Essex Gardens. Yes, yes. She was the lady of the Florentine Gardens. <laughs> not, not the same lady Florentine. The lady Florentine. Oh, my word, I had no idea I was in the presence of a celebrity. You, pre- a flower now, club. you yeah. pretend to not know who lady Florentine is? Well, I... I, I Perhaps it's Southern Modesty. I found yeah. a trap door. <laughs> My word! Let's all go down! <laughs> My goodness, the murder weapon this must be. It's covered in blood and horsehair. Uh, it's a standard issue horse knife. <laughs> Very wide handle to attach to a horseshoe. But only one person can lift this much weight. <laughs> well, Hosterson of the family Hoster, son of host, <laughs> gilded craftsman in the art of hospitality. Is it not true that you are a domestic Sherpa and that you must be uh, skilled in the carrying of all things domestic and otherwise in a household should something happen, either economic uh, uh, problems. And isn't it also true that you would be the only one in this house that has access to the horse stables? Well, you are true after a fashion, my friends. <laughs> However, 
He's peeling his own face oh, off. Oh, shit. Oh. This is disgusting. Oh, what you don't know is I have a horrible skin disease. <laughs> and keep peeling layers of my face off. Are you the... Are you the actual master of this home? Are you the, are you the no, owner? No, I'm just uh, horribly deformed. Oh. <laughs> put, put it back on. That doesn't mean you can't lift the weapon. I can't put it back on. That's so He's offensive. Just peeling his own, just peeling his own skin off like that. See, from poltergeist. Well, what would you have me do? Live in Not pain? Not do that. Don't do it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's unpleasant, sir. Unpleasant. I would expect nothing less of all of you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Another face peel off! Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> That's right. It's my house, and I invited all of you here because, well, each of you should know why. One way or another, you've all done something wrong to me, I think. <laughs> c- c- Colonel a- Assmaster. Yes? Now, you've done a lot of wrong things to a lot of people. Did you not once... Uh, tell me that you would rather see me dead uh, and oh, this is falling apart <laughs> oh just now <laughs> yes uh, yes after a few uh, glasses of port wine I did say as much because you and Lady Florentine have been cheating around behind my back it's quite well known that I had been dating Lady Florentine behind my wife's back for many many months I found another trapdoor. <laughs> but only I'm going down it. <laughs> yeah, look at him go. Okay. He's, he's clearly the murderer, right? This guy is. I think he is. Not this necessarily. Guy. This guy. Secret tunnels, miles of them. Well, Must be some kind of destination. Well, gentlemen. <laughs> I feel like we've learned a valuable lesson here tonight. <laughs> Some bachelors eat peanut butter straight out of the can. Others build tunnels and riddles. No, nobody chased me. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like someone's obvious job to chase you, but uh, I don't, I don't want to point any fingers. Everyone, everyone, look, look. What? Sergeant Levy's been killed. Oh, that's why. <laughs> While that distraction was happening, Sergeant Levy's laying dead in the floor with a, with, a, with, a, with a letter opener stabbed in the back of his face. I wonder. <laughs> Killed in the back of his face. There's no light down here. I can't... I ran for miles and I can't... I guess I could go back the other way, but I've turned around so many times I can't tell which way I'm going now. I'll walk this way for 20 seconds. And if I don't encounter anything, I'll put a mark in the floor, like a divot that I can feel. <laughs> did, did you hear Five those years murders? later. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Will. Professor, I can't believe it's our fifth year here in this mansion. Still, look, the murders have gone unsolved. I think we know who did them. I mean, it seems like it's an open and shut case. I mean, my, my family must be worried about me at this point. I, in a way, though, uh, Colonel, I feel as if we've become our own little family in this mansion. Say hi to my wife if you happen to leave. I found... Ooh. I oh, found. snap. That's, that sounded like a burn, but I'm not sure who got burned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say hi uh, to my wife if you happen to leave. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I, that's, uh, that's what my mom I like. will? Okay, yeah, sure thing. I can hear seagulls. I'm going to make my way towards the sound. Hopefully this will be my last diary entry. <laughs> Hopefully, because I've published these tomes. (laughs) A rocky shore. Has it been so long since I've seen the light? 
This elaborate labyrinth of caverns and passages must have gone all the way under the natural limestone of Murder Island. (laughs) But why terminate here? Why put a door at the sheer cliff? (sighs) The sound mocks me. I did a bad job hosting that murder mystery. (laughs) The jagged rocks invite me to my recompense. It's what I deserve. Out in the distance, you see a sailboat, and it's Colonel uh, Colonel Nassmaster, and he's he's aboard his own vessel, and he's waving him. Goodbye, everybody! Five years, have a good time! Goodbye! Goodbye! Goodbye. Goodbye. Remember us! I'm going back to Old Blighty. Hoist the mainsail and the stunsels and and his fiddle beat to to, to Bowsbrit. (laughs) I think I've come to terms with the loss of my wife now. So many years to meditate on it. I feel much the same, Professor. I feel as if I'm finally ready to move on. As the boat as the boat turns and heaves to towards the wind, towards where the, you, you see the, the the stern of the sh- of the boat come into view, and it says uh, HMS. I I did it. So Assmaster was the murderer. As for my death, none will question its cause. Its murderer was. Lack of preparation. (laughs) Uh, Camera pans up, and you see seagulls fly into the sky. Did I turn into one of them? Or was it just a ratings board thing? (laughs) We don't know. I thought that was a really good murder mystery night. You guys did a pretty good job. I think that was a, a solid effort. <laughs> now imagine what we could do with a couple of hours of preparation. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I think definitely someone should transcribe that. <laughs> and I think with a few tweaks, we got a pretty good script. <laughs> I, I I knew that you're supposed to tell some people that they there's something something about someone else, but I. <laughs> I think I I don't I didn't realize it's supposed to all lead back to You, you just told me your name is Colonel Assmaster and you did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> and then I said you're Professor Puttmunch and you he stole your wife. And then I said you're a Southern Belle and my husband was murdered. Right. By an Se- owl. Separate thing. <laughs> and then I said you're the butler. No way. No. Your name is Spooner. Five minutes later, Spoonerman. And they said you're the butler. No way. You're the explorer. Right. Because I realized I should be the butler. And then you walked over there. That thing would have been a mess without a host. Yeah. And then Levy, I didn't tell anything. You get what? You gave me the most complicated of all of those. Well, I I told you after a while. I said, yeah, you were dating Beauregard. And that you guys wanted to Yeah, rock. and you weren't even in on it. I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> not at all. Not and at all. not only that, the plot thickens. We're trying to rob the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should have told you. I should have told you. Should have told him. I should have told you that. That was a real dead end for me. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't the perfect crime. <laughs> All right. Well, but, <laughs> no, but like like you say, that that was just you freestyling, man. That was uh, that was like that was the 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 equivalent of your freestyle raps. Yeah. Right? That was like like. Yeah, you're saying it's time to time to end the show. And what have we learned? What have we learned tonight? <laughs> we learned that Paul's married. It's true. It doesn't have kids. That he has a show on uh, CISO called Bajillion Dollar... Uh, I was going to say Bajillion Dollar Mysteries. Oh! Bajillion I like Dollar Properties. spin-off idea, though. Created by Kulop. That's right, Kulop Vilasak. Uh, good job saying her last name. I wasn't going to touch it. Vilasak. <laughs> Vila- Vila- Vilasak. All right, next time I'll say it just like I'm saying Johnson. Uh, our friend Kulop created it. Uh, it is supposedly pretty good. I'm biased, but I think it's very funny. (laughs) 
It's like a, it's like an homage to the to the to the treasure chest that is these un, un, unscripted uh, realtor shows, yes. which are all insane. I've seen some of them. They are all insane. They're filled with monstrous people. <laughs> and your character's name is D- Dean Rose Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the patriarch of the real trip. Uh, we learned that Demorge uh, uh, still uh, really took it to heart when we said that turtleneck was sexy last, last time. Because I wore it twice. <laughs> Sorry, that's bullying. I'm bullying. Uh, we learned that Steve uh, 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 has to do everything I say. Uh, we learned, some things you don't. We learned that Spencer's... Uh, I'm an explorer. <laughs> Jeff still loves clothes. Uh, I still love clothes. Still love. Clothes. <laughs> still do. I was at, uh, you know there's some days when I go oh you know what fuck clothes but I st- I come back at the end of the day I'm like fuck I can't I can't quit you clothes but this is this is a weekly check in right? right yeah okay <laughs> we we learned that the uh, the mics are on a hair trigger but the lights are locked down. <laughs> Locked in place. You have to go to a cabinet, get a key, slay a three-headed dog. Uh, <laughs> Two guys have to turn the keys at the same time. <laughs> I said, turn the switch. That's the cold open of the yeah the the the, the, the Matthew Broderick lights gone mad movie from the eighties. Uh, but most of all, we learned to love. <laughs> It is sexual. It's sexual. I was surprised to learn that Spencer automatically against uh, murder mystery role playing. I, I have a thing against games where the idea is let's come up with it right now. <laughs> And that's, you know, that's just experience. Yeah, that's 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 very fair. That's quite fair. <laughs> Well, so I guess I guess Dan, this is, uh, you know, Paul, you've never been on the show before. This is the part where the uh, where our guest Paul uh, sings a little ballad for us. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and I'll, I'll be happy to do your. Uh, I'll Sorry. be happy to do the. Uh, I'm trying to pick music. The the rapper that comes in on the bridge. Oh, great! <laughs> Feature, featuring Dan Harmon. Yeah. The guy that's been assigned yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. by the label. That's right. <laughs> to okay. help bring up your first single. I, I, I don't know because uh, this is brand new. Jordy gave me this one too. Let me see if this one will work. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, I love this ballad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try. Uh... Well, I guess, how long is that one? No, it's too short. You guys uh, do a thing. All right. Yeah. Tell someone it's time to say goodbye. Yo. How do you tell someone that it's time to fly up into the sky? Can you feel it? <laughs> hey, see, you're just doing a little. Yeah, time yeah, in. just a little. Oh, okay, all right. It's like this is that version. Right, right. This it's like, am I listening to the uh, Pussycat Dolls song where Snoop's coming in eventually, <laughs> and he lets you know at the top? He's like, yo. And you're but like, then, okay. okay, but there will be a breakdown. Yeah, of course, you, of course. All right, okay. <laughs> How do you tell someone that it's time to say goodbye? Yeah, that was good. Okay. I, I, I was, thought you were taking. No, over. No, I was taking. I was just. Okay. I was, okay. Take, 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 take. When we met. You had a look in your eyes that I'll never forget. You said you stole a pet from the pet store. For me, you stole a pet for me. And I said, put that pet back in the pet store. It's illegal to steal pets, even for love. Take it down. In for a penny, in for a pound. I saw your mama outside at the ground round, but she said, let's go to the pet store. She said, I won't want to pay for dogs no more. But I said, oh, no, you got to pay a dollar if you're going to take a dog on a leash and a collar. And 
Let's hit the snakes and the figure the two. I'm here with PFG and he's doing the thing. We're at the pet store. I fell in love with you at the stolen pet store. Pet store. You what a confusing name you for a, a pet store. You put a dollar. Sorry, yeah, sorry. you can't sorry. front on that. <laughs> Still going? Second verse. <laughs> yo. BFT, yo. How do you say hello to a new lover in your life? Never wanted to fuck ya! Do you say hello when your new lover has a knife? He said, I'm gonna murder pet store employees. <laughs> Why must this happen to me? My new lover is a pet store employee murderer. Can't you see? Two times two, two to the four. I put four against four and I got eight more. I'm bad at math. But that don't mean I'm good at reading. Gotta fucking do the thing. It's cutting and bleeding. Gotta... I'm on the sidewalk and on the street. I put your mama's face in her hat and grabbed her feet. And I swung her around like she was a shot put. Gonna put your mama so low, she gonna get shut. Shut, 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 shut. Pet store murderer, why are you sexy? Pet store murderer, why do you hypnotize me? Pet store murderer, why are you so sexy? Pet store murderer, I'm in love. Shit. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Thank you for coming to Harmon Town, everybody. Let's hear it for Steve Levy. Demorge Brown. Spencer Crittenden. I'm Jeff Davis, your mayor, Dan Harmon, everybody. Paul F. Tompkins. Oh, yeah. That's how you do it. Thank you for coming. Drive fast and take chances, everyone. Did you get any of that? It's a good show. Feral Audio.